So Rachel, lots of my friends have been saying, and um, if I'm honest, through personal experience, the lockdown isn't that easy when you're living with somebody, you know, 24 seven, you're not used to doing it, are you? Are you hearing that? Yeah. In fact, mo- most of the clients I speak to have something around trying to manage working from home, being with someone 24 seven, the kids all being there, needing to homeschool the children, needing to get their work done. You know, it's, it is proving quite challenging for a lot of people. You have no kind of personal space, do you? How can that affect relationships? Well, I don't think we realise quite how much freedom we have before something like this comes along. So, Um, It is really difficult because I know, you know, from some of my clients that I've spoken to, they have said to their partner, I just want to go for a walk by myself and their partner's had hurt feelings. And, you know, why don't you want me to come with you kind of thing. But it is really important to have personal space. And it's if you have enough rooms in your house to be able to work from separate rooms, that can be really helpful if you are working from home. Um, And just you know, trying to understand one another's point of view and trying to be clear about why you need your personal space and, you know, understanding that each other does need that because we have so much of it normally in normal times. How do you even broach that subject without it blowing up into a big argument? It can be hard. I mean, obviously, it's easier if you don't have that conversation at the moment that you are feeling really irritated with them. So possibly at that moment, take yourself away, try and try and go somewhere different, lock yourself in the bathroom if necessary, try and calm down a bit. And then later on, when you're feeling a bit better, hopefully you'd be feeling better anyway. So sort of, you could say something like, I've been thinking about, you know, the, the time that we have apart or um, how are you feeling about not having your own space or, you know, what do you think about us maybe having separate walks tomorrow? You know, so kind of, prefacing it with a with a kind of gentle introduction really I feel like some of my friends are coping really well with this and kind of almost coming together they're the ones who are doing those TikTok videos of them dancing and those types of things and and other friends are are, are clearly finding this more difficult and trying to go separate ways is that a measure of somebody's good or bad relationship No, I don't think it is. It can be, obviously, you know, and if you were already, if you're already experiencing difficulties in your relationship, this can exacerbate them like a million times. But but for people who generally have a good relationship, it could be, I often talk to clients about introversion and extroversion. And we, we normally think of someone who's an introvert as being someone who's quite quiet and shy. And someone who's an extrovert has been quite confident and outgoing. But actually, it's about where you draw your energy from. So introverts draw their energy from being alone. And they find being with other people quite draining. Whereas extroverts find being with people really energizes them. And being alone is quite draining. So if you have two introverts living in a house together, then that's okay. Because they'll understand one another's need for space and they'll respect that. Whereas if you have one of each, that's then quite difficult because the extrovert is quite happy to be with the other person constantly, whereas the introvert feels really drained and just needs that space apart. So sometimes that can be a really uh, helpful way into that conversation. You could say to your partner, look, I think actually I'm an introvert and I think I really need some energy so I need to be by myself for a bit or, you know, that kind of think It's more that than it is that the relationship is not good how do you deal with this situation going forward inevitably it is going to be quite tricky for some people and I suppose there is no sort of sugarcoating that it it has to be about communication it has to be about explaining how you're feeling and owning your feelings so it's not about blaming the other person you're in my space all the time you're getting on my nerves why are you always there every time I turn around it's not about attacking somebody but that's where things can kind of go awry a little bit I think it is about saying look I'm finding it really difficult to not have any space by myself it's nothing you know it's not you it's not your fault I just really need some time to recharge so it's about considering their feelings, so talking to them in a kind way, thinking about how they're feeling about things, but trying to express how you're feeling 
um, without without attacking or accusing or anything. I mean, that's that's really the heart of the matter is the communication. Mm. It's um, it's hard to know. I think I've certainly had this situation. It's hard to know whether I'm feeling grumpy or angry or frustrated because I'm anxious about this situation that we're in or actually that my partner is just really annoying me and, or doing something that isn't quite right. How do you differentiate between feeling stressed and anxious because we're going through these times or whether it is an, actually an issue with your relationship that you need to address? I think if you've generally had a really good relationship up until this point, the chances are that it is your anxiety and it's the stress. If your relationship hasn't been good up until this point, chances are it's that maybe you're not compatible and that your relationship is really showing the strain under this having to live in each other's pockets kind of situation. I've got a question for you about chores. <laughs> Lots of us are having to, to, to do lots more at home potentially because we're not having any outside help or, you know, family members who are, you know, helping to look after children or cleaners or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you're having to separate those chores up. How how do you broach that subject when um, one of you, <laughs> you know, I'm talking from personal experience, where one of you is very proactive in the house and wants to do lots of cleaning and keep the house tidy and the other one is, is less like that? It would have to be about having a conversation, sitting down and talking about it and sort of, you know, acknowledging the fact that you're in this together. So it's got to be a conversation where you are working towards a mutually beneficial point so it's not about sort of mudslinging you don't do this and I do all of that and it's got to be a conversation where you say okay look we're in this together I'm not telling you you need to change I'm not saying I need to change it's not about us changing it's about us finding um, a mutually beneficial way where we can negotiate sort of an outcome that makes us both feel better about this so it might be accepting that one of you does chores, but the other one maybe cooks the tea or, or you know, looks after the kids for a bit longer if you've got children or something like that. So kind of because some people just aren't good at doing chores and have never particularly liked doing chores. And it might be that they have to put up and shut up and kind of get on with with it. Or it might be that you can negotiate another way forward. But it is about reaching a goal where you are both feeling better about that. It's about working together rather than arguing. What, what's it like for you at the moment? Because presumably most of your meetings would be face to face and you're not able to do those at the moment. But I guess it's important to, to keep those meetings up. Are you doing a lot of them like this over Skype or using technology? When this all came out, I emailed everybody that I had booked in and I said, look, you know, we can't do this. I can off I'm offering three things at the moment. So I'm offering video sessions um, I'm offering telephone sessions and I'm offering instant messaging sessions so I've been using um, instant I've been working as a, an online counselor for about five years now um, so I'm quite experienced in that I think for some people who've not done it before it's quite difficult um, and actually I'm work, sort of working in a, in a range of those it's quite it's actually quite nice to have that range of of different methods and it's quite nice to see people adapting and still coming to their sessions. The difficulty at the moment is not finding the privacy to have your session. So say, for example, if someone is coming to see me because they have relationship issues, it can be really difficult for them to find that space where their partner is not going to overhear the session, you know, and obviously they need the sessions even more if they have relationship issues and this is kind of exacerbating things. Um, but that's where instant messaging is quite good because nobody can overhear that. And, as, and the, the platform that I use, well, I can't, I use Skype or I use a platform called VC and the messages are encrypted and just they just delete afterwards so no one can find them. It's, it's a very difficult time, isn't it, to, to be going through and there will be feelings of anxiety. Is, is there any advice for people who, who you know, are suffering with that of ways you can deal with it? Yeah, um, well, one of the things that I was actually speaking to somebody about last week was this kind of this analogy of going with the flow as if you're in a as if you're in a river. So 
a lot of people find themselves trying to swim against the current and they're getting really frustrated and it's absolutely exhausting, you know, and they're using the energy fighting against what is inevitably something they actually have no control over. Um, whereas they could be using that energy more productively. So I think it's about acceptance to begin with. It's accepting that we are in this situation. There is nothing we can do about this situation. We are out of control of it. We don't know how long it's going to go on for. So just kind of going with the flow and recognizing also that you can only take it one day at a time. We've only ever got this one day ahead of us. We don't need to kind of project our thoughts into the far distant future and say, oh my God, like what if we're still doing this in September? And you don't need to wind yourself up like that. You just have to concentrate on the one day that you have ahead of you. So if we're having a lot of negative feelings in this situation, how can we cope with that? I think um, one of the things that I find personally really useful, and I know a lot of people find really useful, is making sure that we are grateful for what we do have. Because I think a lot of us tend to um, focus on the negatives and focus on everything we don't have now. And we have to queue up at the supermarket and we can't go and see our friends. And we're focusing on all the negatives where actually there are still loads of positives. So the fact that we have to queue up at the supermarket, but we still have fresh food that we can eat every day. You know, we have our homes. We have a roof over our head. We have our friends at the end of a, a Skype call or at the end of a phone call or you could even you know you could even write them old-fashioned letters I mean who doesn't love getting a letter in the post or sending a card or something um you know for, for the majority of us we are, we still have our health I know the coronavirus is really scary I know that it's you know it can be deadly for some people but for the majority of us it won't be and I think focusing on that is important and something that I do and have always have done for, I don't know, at least a couple of years now is every night when I go to bed, I lie in bed and I think about all the things that I'm really grateful for. And I kind of, you know, thank the universe for everything that I have that I'm lucky to have. And there is so much that we are lucky to have. You know, we are really lucky in this country. Oh, I do a meditation at night that is about gratitude and um yeah that that's the, that's the same thing it's thinking and it reminds you to think of one thing in your day that you're grateful for and it can be you know it can be a lovely cup of coffee or it can be walking your dog or you know a smile from a stranger and that really helps me actually so that's kind of what you're saying i guess isn't it yeah, it is. And some people keep gratitude uh, gratitude journals or gratitude diaries, or you can write down three great things that have happened to you that day and put them in a jar. And then at the end of the week, you can have a look at all the great things that have happened to you that week. There is there is there there are so many things that you can do. And just being really mindful, I think, and, and being in the present moment. People are in a situation where they're worried about, you know, relationships at home with their partner. Is... Is there anything you'd advise them to do? Um, I guess I guess this isn't a great time to be raising those conversations of, you know, I, I don't think this is working. No, it's really hard. Uh, and I have actually got a client who's in that situation now. In fact, I've got a couple of clients who are in this situation now where they were working towards ending their relationships. And now this has happened. Both of them have kind of decided themselves that, because their partners were kind of aware of the fact that things weren't great and that they may be coming to an end, they've kind of pressed pause on it. They've sort of, they've decided in both relationships that I'm talking about, funnily, they've decided that they're just going to pause that for a bit. They're just going to focus on the situation they're in now. They work in separate rooms. They, you know, will sit together in the evening and have a cup of tea or, or whatever, but they're not having those conversations now because they they know that actually it might lead to somewhere that's potentially really awkward and unsolvable in a way so they're just kind of they're leaving it be for now but I guess if there is a conversation to be had and it can't be ignored again it needs to be one of those conversations where you're working towards something together so acknowledging the fact that you really aren't getting on and I'm um, trying to come up with a plan to to minimize the, the potential you know stress and damage that that's doing to you both because it's not if your if your relationship's bad you both know that the relationship's bad there's not 
you know, there's, there's kind of no hiding it in this situation. So, again, it would be about having to have quite an honest conversation and and say, look, this is where we are. This is what's happening. How can, how can we make it as bearable as possible for, for ourselves? I think it's quite difficult with social media as well, isn't it? Because obviously most people, when they're using things like Twitter and Instagram and things, will post really lovely um, happy pictures of, of their lives. It's very unlikely you're going to post a picture of you having an argument, isn't it? So, you know, it's quite, it's quite an unrealistic world we're living in sometimes, and that can put pressure on you too, can't it? Definitely, yeah. I mean, I always say it's like, you know, Facebook and, and Instagram and that, it's the highlight reel of somebody's life, isn't it? It's not, it's not really what their life is. And anybody can take a photograph and, and post it. And in fact, one of my friends um, a few years ago, she there was a picture of her with her husband with the son on his shoulders and they were in the park and it was all looked great. And I thought, oh, you know, lovely. And then about a week later, she texted me to tell me that they were getting divorced <sighs> and they'd been arguing and he'd been really horrible and, you know, all of this stuff. You would never have known it from her Facebook and Instagram feed. It, it just looked like they lived this perfect, happy family life. And I think it does put a lot of pressure on us to kind of live up to what we think other people are experiencing and what their relationships are. But we really need to be careful about that and, you know, realise that that's not <laughs> that's not how other people's lives are. That's just the life they want to portray to the outside world. So if you're in a tricky situation right now and you, you're trying not to let it exacerbate into a huge argument, try to have a conversation. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, try to have a conversation when things are feeling calmer. So not in the heat of the moment. Um, try to try to take ownership of how you're feeling without blaming the other person. Try to um, agree at the beginning of the conversation that you are reaching, you know, you're negotiating something so that you're reaching a goal that you, you can both live with. Um there are there are ways of having a conversation, not necessarily if you're going to split up, but if things are really difficult. There's a couple of things you can try. Um, one of those is active listening, which is basically uh, where you give the person the chance to to say everything that they're feeling, and then the way that you've understood it, you repeat it back to them. So if they say, "I'm feeling as though I don't have any privacy," "I feel quite suffocated," "I feel like I don't have any space to myself," and um, you know, I'm finding it really difficult. I'm really struggling with it. It's making me feel more stressed. The other person then repeats back. I, OK, I understand that you're feeling like you don't have enough space. I understand it's making you feel more stressed and that you could. And that helps both partners because it means that the partner who's reflecting back has actually heard themselves saying it. So they've understood it better. And the person who said it initially feels better because they feel heard and understood. So that's that's a really good way of doing that. And you can I mean, there's there's an exercise that some couples counsellors do. I don't personally do this exactly in this way, but you can hold something, you know, like a talking stone or whatever it might be. And when you're holding that stone, that's your opportunity to talk. So you could sit and hold that stone for 10 minutes and tell them everything you're feeling again, not accusing them, but what you're feeling. And then they have to listen and then you swap, they hold the stone or whatever, and then they get their chance to say how they're feeling, and each of you reflects back what you've heard. So that can be quite a controlled way of having that conversation if you are able to do that, and it enables you both to understand one another better and feel more understood. So just finally then, if people um, are struggling and they need advice, is, is there anywhere that they can go at the moment and, and anything they can do to, to help them through this? Um, yeah, depending on what they're struggling with, um, if we're talking about relationships, you know, the Relate, the Relate website is really good. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the NHS. And if you if, if finances aren't an issue, then I would recommend talking to a counsellor, talking to other people even, you know, if you're, if you're struggling, talking to friends, family. Great advice. Rachel, thank you so much for speaking to me. You're more than welcome. And links to help and advice are in the video description, as well as the National Domestic Abuse Helpline, which is 0808 2000 247.